we're just looking for the, the second uh, microphone. So um, the second talk of uh, today's uh, IoT talk is uh, from Philip Cran. Uh, I was looking up, you, you, you're describing yourself as a conference chunky. That's, uh, that's sweet. <laughs> so he's a ferocious meetup organizer. I've seen uh, that you're quite active in the meetup scene here in Vienna, quite, quite nice. And you're a passionate soft uh, software developer and developer advocate. So, well, floors is yours, except, oh, no, no, no. There's one thing we want to mention. So we have a special um, URL. It's uh, tinyurl.com uh, IoD Big Data. So if you have any comments, if you want to write something, if you want to raise any questions uh, during um, the talks tonight, uh, please write something in here. Um, uh, we will um, uh, read it then, and at the end, we can use these questions during the Q&A session. Okay, Philip, so it's all yours. Have fun. Perfect. Thanks. Um, first off, uh, I need to take a selfie with you. Uh, just to show my American colleagues that we can organize proper meetups in Vienna. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, I'm Philip. Uh, yeah, and I'll talk about the Elastic Stack and Time Lion in specific. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know me, I organized the local database meetup, ViennaDB where we talk about all things database, uh, relational, non-relational, whatever you want. And I also work for the company Elastic, which is behind Elasticsearch and the Elastic Stack, where I'm uh, in the infrastructure team and also a developer advocate. So like in the next two months, I'm doing like 15 conferences or so. So yeah, I'm, I'm just a few days in Vienna each month. So. Who knows about Elasticsearch? Who has no heard about Elasticsearch? Okay, quite a few. Uh, you know for search. It's just doing full text search. You throw data at it and it will just index it and you can search it. Uh, so some more or less well-known sites use it for their search. So anytime you search on, for example, Stack Overflow, GitHub, or Wikipedia, your search will go through Elasticsearch. So this is working already very well. Uh, but at Elastic, the idea is always kind of what's next, what can we do, how can we improve. Um, so on top of the basic searching, we have something ki called Kibana, which is kind of the window into your data. This is the visualization where we'll, we'll do a quick demo afterwards. This is just to show off your data. You can quickly visualize it, you can graph it, and you can just search it. And then there is Logstash which uh, is indexing or collecting your data and probably enriching your data. Just you have your systems and you want from, for example, your data silos or wherever you have your data, you want to get data from all the different sources and combine them into Elasticsearch. And this Elasticsearch, Logstash in Kibana was the so-called ELK stack, um, which got we even got, got a nice little toy animal with an elk uh, for the elk stack, uh, which was very popular. So what you may, may be most interested in, like how do I get my data in? So there are various sources uh, from where we can actually consume the data to put it into Elasticsearch. Uh, on top, these are kind of the, the low level integrations from syslog, standard in, files, TCP, UDP, Unix sockets, uh, SNMP, whatever you want. We have integrations into different databases, JDBC, queues, anything you can imagine. And kind of on the other side of the spectrum for the high level search services, we have integrations into Twitter, meetup.com, GitHub, even Drupal. So anywhere where you want to consume your data, you can just ingest that with Logstash throw it into Elasticsearch where it will be indexed and be searchable afterwards, and in the end you can visualize it in Kibana. And just to get a little picture of how does Logstash actually pass your data, you define patterns. This is much like regular expressions. The details don't matter that much anyway. It's just like you get a message in and you just need to parse it into its independent parts. 
and that is what Logstash can do for you. So you always have an input where you consume the data from, you have a so-called filter where you pass the data and probably enrich it. Enrichment would be you have IP addresses and you want to make uh, or select uh, the country based on that IP address. So where are your visitors coming from? And finally, you, ha you have an output where you can either throw the data into another system, a queue, or directly into Elasticsearch where it will be stored. And big companies are using that as well. For example, CERN with the Hadron Collider and they have hundreds and thousands of computers, for example, just to monitor all their computers and gather the logs, they're using the ELK stack for that. Goldman Sachs is also betting big time on the ELK stack just to gather all the different information they have in the system and to make better decisions and also to avoid fines because in the past they've often hired like compliance issues where they did something bad and then they had, a f had to pay a fine for $100 million. And then they decided probably it makes sense just to invest like two or three millions into proper compliance management and audits uh, to avoid those fines in the future. Okay, and then there's the little fish which is called Beats. So Logstash was very nice. Uh, Logstash was originally written in Ruby, which is not the quickest language. And then we put it on Java, so it's now JRuby running inside the JVM, but that's still pretty heavy. And Beats is the agent you can deploy on any server to gather your data from that server. And it can just ingest files, network packets, uh, CPU metrics, anything of those things. It can, in a ver very lightweight fashion, can gather these metrics and send them off, either directly to Elasticsearch or again to Logstash just to enrich the data there again. The problem with Beats is uh, we have the ELK stack and we have Beats. And then we try to fit Beats on top of the ELK stack, and then we had Belk, which is the ELK with a B. Uh, so you have the ELK horns and the B, and it just didn't really work. Uh, so we, we had to yeah, get rid of the Belk, unfortunately. Uh, and it's now just called the Elastic Stack. So every time you see ELK stack, it's kind of old. The new term is Elastic Stack, and it combines all the te technologies we have, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, and Beats. So to visualize that again is you have the lightweight agent, which is Beats, which will just gather all your data. It can then throw that directly into Elasticsearch, or it can forward it to Logstash, which can do some enrichment, throw away other data which it doesn't need, and then insert into Elasticsearch where all your data is stored. And on top you have Kibana, which can visualize everything. And this is now kind of the topic of the talk. This is Timeline. Uh, timeline is for time series, which might be most relevant to IoT stuff, uh, where you can just draw diagrams and compare charts over time how they actually look like. And to give you a quick demo, you can actually try all of that yourself at home. Uh, there's a GitHub repo. Uh, it will just walk you through the whole setup. It will do everything for you. Uh, just follow the steps and you have the full stack set up on your local machine. Uh, which is very convenient. I'll post the links to the meetup groups. You, yeah, you, of course, you can take pictures, but uh, you'll get the link so you can start playing around with it yourself. So let's take a quick look at the demo. Since time is limited, I have everything up and running. So this is Kibana. This is the visualization of all your data. And I'm just... Uh, gathering all the information I have inside my virtual machine. And I have different uh, indexes. Here I have, for example, gathered all the network packets that come into my machine, where you can, it's probably a bit small, but you can see, for example, source IP, uh, specific IPs. We have file beats, which are just local log files, and top beats, which are the system metrics, just like the Linux top command. And all those are, are gathered into my system. And now we can have, uh, we can visualize them, we can build fancy dashboards, but we'll jump right to Timeline. So Timeline, by default, uh, will just gather all the data. You can see I have yesterday at 3 o'clock, for example, I have set up my machine. It has been more or less gathering metrics 
all time long. And today I st restarted my virtual machine and now it has started to, to generate more data again. Uh, and here we can simply write our queries uh, to visualize what's actually going on. So for example, if I just want to take a look at um, the logs I have consumed, I can say, give me everything that is in file beat on any date. Uh, and we should be able to visualize that. And probably 12 hours is not the best time frame. I'll just cut that down to, I don't know, eight hours. And on real systems, it's probably a bit faster. It's just uh, my virtual machine runs all of the Elastic Stack with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, which is not enough. OK, so we have here uh, our data visualized. And I can even kind of mark an area and zoom into that. And now I can do more interesting stuff where I can, for example, compare how many log files have I com consumed and, for example, how many packets uh, did my system get. So I say again, .es always accesses the data in my Elasticsearch cluster. And now I say I want to get the data from the index uh, packet beat. So the next of packets. And I can actually do the same for Topit again. So Topit is just the monitoring of my system. Oops. And there's an index missing. And now it's just aggregating all the data I have in my system, and there, there you can see the activity. Now the Q query doesn't give you much information, so what you can do, for example, is you can uh, simply say, I want for this, I want to add a label, and my label is, the first one is files, and I call it files. And it's aggregating the data again. And then here you can say it's probably pre pretty small. You can see it's a file. And I could rename the others as well. And then I can just click on one to get rid of it, uh, get rid of the next one, or just kind of put them together. So any kind of data you have, you can very easily visualize in your time series. So you have the data inside your cluster, but you can also use uh, external data. For example, uh, we have automatically integrated the data of the World Bank. If you want to, for example, visualize uh, how many people are living in France and Germany, because they are kind of similar size, uh, and you want to visualize that over a time, you can simply do that. So I'll quickly type that in. So what I've done is, uh, WBI is World Bank, and then for France and for Germany, I'm just getting the inhabitants. And I definitely need to change my time frame. So for example, I say like the last 50 years to now, I want to visualize what? Ah, sorry, uh, one minute. Resolution is probably not the right one. Let's go with one year. And you can see, actually, uh, Germany has been relatively stable, and the French are now catching up. And at some point, they might overtake the French. And what you could now, for example, uh, do as well is you want the deriv derivative, so that change over time. And you can visualize that as well. So you can see uh, in France, the population has been growing pretty in a pretty stable fashion, whereas in Germany, it's uh, not as stable and fluctuating quite a lot. Um, so yeah. And actually, could I make that bigger? I'm not sure. Um, yes. Uh, and since I have uh, two more minutes, 
I can just show you uh, with all the information you have in your system, there are pre-built uh, dashboards where you can simply open existing ones and just show what is going on on the system. For example, I have HTTP traffic on my system. It's now loading all the data. And just from the feed that is running and collecting all the network traffic on my system, I can visualize that. So I can see, for example, how many requests have gone to my local server, um, which URLs have been most popular, uh, and we have many different visualizations. Um, but enough for the demo. Wrapping up, since time is scarce. Uh, so you have learned about the Elastic Stack, Beats to ingest, uh, Logstash also to ingest and enrich your data, Elasticsearch to store it and make it searchable, and Kibana, which is the window into your data. With Timeline, you can simply draw many different time series. You can compare various sources, you can visualize uh, differences, and you have I think it's like 10 or 15 things you can actually do with your data, like derivatives, uh, and you can compare all of these and simply visualize them. And if you want to get the latest updates, uh, the guy who created Kibana is now doing a timeline full-time, uh, Rashid, he's also working at Elastic, uh, and on his Twitter account you can see his daily updates, what new features he's adding, and the cool stuff he's playing around. And he has some pretty interesting ideas. Yes, and if you want to give it a try, all of the source, uh, all of the code is open source. Just download it for free, spin up a machine, uh, and give it a try. So we're happy to help. Just reach out if you run into any trouble, and we're happy to give you a helping hand. Any questions? And, of course, like any startup, we have lots of stickers. If you're looking for stickers, come to me. Cool. Are there any questions? Well, Harald? Uh, well, um, first you and you. Okay. Um, is there an API available for uh, to build anything like Kibana on Elasticsearch? For example, if it uh, functions which we can feed on and then just uh, build our own visualization um, possibilities or maybe interfacing into other tools? Ye you mean to wait? You mean to visualize other stuff with Kibana, other than Elasticsearch data? I mean, um, to use Elasticsearch data and then use a different visualization tool, for example, yeah, rather than in, in with Kibana. Instead of Kibana? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we provide Kibana, but if you want to use something else, so just uh, code it up yourself. You're totally free to do that. Okay. So yeah, the the API is still available. I mean, it's it's open. Uh, so. For Kibana itself, there is an API. It's currently alpha, uh, so don't rely on it uh, not to change. But uh, in Kibana, there is a very new API, you, so you can influence stuff yourself. But don't count on it to be totally stable at the moment. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm a little confused about timeline. Is it just a visualizer, or are there actually time series statistical uh, tests that are that are implemented and that are available because what you want to do with time series data is actually do more than just check for derivatives. I'm I'm a little confused as to what's actually in timeline that's not already in Kibana. Is it just a visualizer for things that happen over time? Yes, it's just for visualization. So the data itself is all in Elasticsearch, and there is nothing specific you need to do with your data. So that's kind of your basic data you have. And Kibana is just to have visualizations for that and also compare different data and also pull in different data sources. But like is, there, the world is anything like what's in either the R programming language or that's available in the Spark stack for, for doing analysis of time series actually in Timeline? No. no. Uh, Timeline even uses its own syntax for the queries because the author thought uh, any existing syntax was kind of weird to use and he just like modeled a, a new very simple query language on top of that. So that that's not even basic Elasticsearch queries you're using, but Timeline has its own query language for that. Okay. Thanks. 
So one uh, final question, a quick one, please. Is there some kind of built-in authorization or does this have to be handled on the proxy level? Let's say you don't want to share all the data with everybody that has access. Can you assign some users or do you have this to do, I don't know, Nginx or whatever it might be and handle it on the... So, um, <laughs> this is now getting a bit more complex. Like, we're a big company and we need to earn some money somewhere and the security stuff is commercial. So if you want need security features, those are we call those XPAC. There are some extensions uh, which cost money. They provide security. What you cannot do at the moment is you cannot restrict who is able to view which dash dashboard. So either you can log into uh, Kibana and then you can still limit which data you can actually access, but you cannot really limit uh, which dashboards to show at the moment. This is on the roadmap, it will come. I'm not sure when it will arrive, but it will definitely happen. But in contrast to the other stuff I've shown, uh, security and those limitations will cost money. Okay, so very thank you, Philip.